Hi, I'm Chad Hutchings, and this is how to create a song in Cakewalk. Click on the Cakewalk icon. Then click on the basic icon. Click on the Plugins tab. Click on the Virtual Instruments icon. Double click on Drums. Double click on SI Drum Kit. Then click on OK. Double click on the Virtual Instruments icon on the SI Drum Kit header to open the instrument window. You can click on the drums and cymbals to hear them. Now click on Default Prog and double click on a drum kit on the pop-up menu to select a different drum kit. Then click on the X icon to close the window. Right mouse click the drum track. Click on View on the pop-up menu. Then click on Step Sequencer. Here you can click on the squares to create your own drum beat. But first, click on Pattern. Click on Load Pattern on the pop-up menu. Double click on Templates. Then double click on ARX Drums. Now you have the names of the sound on each row added to each drum row header. You can resize the Step Sequencer window by moving the cursor so it turns into a double-headed arrow. Then pressing the left mouse button and dragging down or up the screen. You can also scroll through the rows with the scroll bar. Click on a square to add a note. or click on the right mouse button to delete a note. Here though, I will use a cakewalk drum pattern. So click on Pattern, click on Load Pattern, click on the up arrow, Double click on Groovy, then double click on Broken Levy 144. Click on the play icon to hear the beat, then click on the play icon again to stop the beat. Move the mouse cursor to the end of the MIDI section on the drum track, so it turns into a double-headed arrow. Press the left mouse button and drag right to loop the MIDI beat along the track. Click on the Zoom Out icon to zoom out the song timeline.
click the Back to Start icon to set the song back to the beginning. And click on the Play icon to play your song. Then click on the Play icon again to stop playing your song. Or click on the stop icon to stop the song and set the track position marker line back to the beginning of your song. Now let's add a bass guitar sound. So double click on bass and double click on SI bass guitar. Then click on OK. Next, right mouse click the bass track and click on View. Now we could click on Step Sequencer again and add notes like we did on the drum track. But this time, click on Piano Roll View. At the left of the Piano Roll View, there is a keyboard and each note is aligned with a row on the piano roll grid. Use the scroll bar at the right side of the grid to move along the keyboard rows. Above the grid is the ruler. Currently, there are four notes to a bar measure. So the ruler shows a vertical line for each note and a number next to the vertical line of the first note of a bar measure. This number shows the bar measure number. Double click to the right of the vertical line on the grid to add a note. To change the length of a note, Move the mouse cursor over the end of the note until it turns into a double-headed arrow. Then press the left mouse button and drag left or right. To move a note, move the mouse cursor over the middle of the note until it turns into a four-headed arrow. Then press the left mouse button and drag the note either left or right, to change the timing of the note. Or up or down, to change the pitch of the note. Right mouse click the note to delete it. Here I will add a note on every beat grid line of the song. So the notes play the lowest E note of the bass guitar. Now let's add a keyboard sound, so double click on General MIDI. Double click on Cakewalk TTS1. Then click on OK. Click on the Virtual Instrument icon on the TTS1 track header to open the TTS1 window. Click on the word Piano 1 on the first TTS1 track. Click on Preset on the pop-up menu. Click on Synth Pad. Then click on Polysynth. Next, click on the X icon. For this track, let's record in real time. 
using a MIDI controller keyboard. You will need to plug your MIDI controller keyboard into your computer before you start Cakewalk. Then click on Edit at the top left of the screen and click on Preferences on the pop-up menu. Now click on Devices in the MIDI section and click on the tick box to the right of the MIDI controller's name in the Input section so there is a tick in the tick box. Then click on OK. Now click on the metronome icon. And click on the plus icon next to Record Count In. So it says 1 in the box. And then click on OK. Next, click on the red dot on the TTS1 track header to turn recording on. Then click on the record icon. After the four metronome beeps, play your MIDI keyboard to record some notes. Then press the stop icon. Double click on the MIDI recording on the TTS1 track to open the Piano Roll view. Here you can move or edit the notes. Finally, let's add some vocals. So let's start by adding an audio track. Click on Insert at the top left of the screen. Then click on Audio Track. Click on the track number. Then click on None on the In-Out section of the track strip. Now select the mic input for your microphone. Here I am using input 1 on my Zoom U22 audio interface. So I click on MME Devices on the pop-up menu, then click on Line Input L. Next, click on the red dot on the track header to ready the track for recording. You will notice green lines now appear on the volume meter on the track strip when you speak into the microphone. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now click on the red dot on the TTS-1 track to turn off track recording on the TTS-1 track as we don't want to record on the track when recording our vocals. Also, click on the icon above the metronome icon to turn off the metronome beep from playing during recording. Then click on the record icon, wait for the four metronome beeps, then record your vocals. Finally, let's save the project, so click on File. Click on Save on the pop-up menu. 
Type in a name for your project. Then click on Save. Now that the song is saved, click on File. And click on Exit. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. Cheers.